Uh, we're going to talk about prospecting systems, but more importantly, we're going to talk about building a foundation for your career, a platform that you're going to jump from to get your career to the next level, because everything really starts with prospecting. And too many of your fellow agents, unfortunately, right now are sitting back in the office, drinking coffee, standing around the water cooler, talking about how bad things are and how they can't make any money. And that's simply not true. In every office here, in every uh, large company office I go to around the country, there are agents making $100,000, $200,000, half a million a year, even in this market. There are also agents in your offices right now that this year will probably make $8 they will eventually be out of the business. It might be by the time I finish this workshop. It might be by the end of the week or by the time you get back to the office. And at some point in time, they may be standing under a bridge, warming themselves over one of those fires in a barrel. Or they could be working as a bagger at the shop and save locally. It, either way, I'm not sure which scenario is worse. You don't want to be one of those people. You want to be one of those 100,000, 200,000, half million, million dollar producers who earns that take home each year. The foundation, as I said, of the real estate business is prospecting, and a lot of people don't understand it, so I'm going to make it really clear. Realtors have seven or eight functions. That's all we've really got. We have a seller side and we've got a buyer side. On the seller side, it starts with prospecting, finding a listing, finding business. You're not really in business unless you have inventory. The second thing we do is do a listing presentation. We have to be able to go into a house, show them why we're the best, and by the way, you are. Show them why we're the best, handle their objections like, why can't I list it at twice the value? I need some room to negotiate. Or why can't I list it with uh, discount brokerage R us? Don't they only charge a $3,000 flat fee commission? No, they don't. They upsell you. You have to be able to handle objections, you have to be able to price, and you have to be able to show them why you're the best. But the reality is, you won't get to the listing appointment unless you have prospects unless you have listing appointments. And if you get better and better and better at your listing uh, presentation, you're going to find that the amount of business you get will increase because you'll close more of those listings, you'll get more inventory, and you'll make more money. So the better you are at a listing presentation, the more business you'll do. But it starts with finding a listing. And then the third part of working with sellers is servicing them, taking care of your sellers so that they refer you to their friends and family. And the better you are at that, the more referrals you get. But again, you need a listing. On the buyer's side, you have to handle incoming calls. And the better you are at handling incoming calls, the more income you're going to have because you're going to close more of them. But on handling incoming calls, the same thing is true. You either need a message, and we'll talk about that when we talk about unique service, uh, selling propositions, or you need a listing for them to actually contact you about. Don't rely on the office or you'll be one of those people making $8 a year. You have to have a listing to handle incoming calls. And then, of course, there's buyer agency. You're going to do a presentation and then servicing those buyers. And then at the bottom, we talk about uh, putting a sale together, negotiating in the paperwork. But it all starts in that upper right-hand corner with prospecting. Honestly, Lauren, isn't it true that 41% of all clients that we work with are referred to us by our past clients, our sphere of influence, and those people who already like and trust us? Yes, that's true. And isn't it also true, Lauren, that 23% of all of our sales are past clients coming back and using us again? Yeah, that's true, too. So if 64% of our business comes from people who already know us, already like, and already trust us, what is the point to going out and trying to find more business? Because the reality is you don't have enough past clients now. And the truth is you need to go out and find more business because you haven't paid your cell phone bill for this month yet. And your nephew has a birthday party coming up next weekend and you don't have the money to buy him a gift. So you have to find a way to build business right now, and you can't rely on waiting for something to happen. Every piece of business you do will potentially lead to more and more business. That's why we have to make sure that you're doing what's in your best interest to build a long-term strong business. There are a lot of real estate trainers in the industry right now saying if you deliver wow service, if you deliver legendary service, if you deliver the best service possible, Clients will refer you more and more and more clients. That's really what you've got to concentrate on. Deliver exceptional service. People will send their friends and family to you as long as you train them that you need their help. I'm going to do my best work for you. I'm going to concentrate my time and effort on trying to help you to sell your house. In return, I can't spend a whole lot of time prospecting. So what I need in return is you to send me your friends and family. If you think I'm doing a great job, please send me your friends and family. And by the way, that's true. Delivering exceptional service will build your business over time. 
However, you need a listing first. I think the reason so many agents in this industry fail is that they don't start the business right. They don't start prospecting in the very beginning. You know, only one out of 20 agents lasts in this industry more than three years. And that's a shame because this industry can give you unlimited earning potential. Absolutely. This industry also allows you to have some free time to be able to pick and choose when you want to take off. I know a lot of you don't believe that, but when most of your clients are referred to you, when uh, they respect your opinion, when you deliver exceptional service and they're referred to you so that someone says, John says you're the best, don't get stuck with doggy breath realty, I want to deal with you, you can push them off a day or two when you want to go away and they'll still work with you. They won't just go pick your name out of a phone book. So yes, delivering exceptional service absolutely works, but you have to start obtaining business first and then deliver exceptional service to them. So what is prospecting? Apparently, prospecting is a dirty word. At least that's what I hear from most realtors. But prospecting is a way to grow your personal business over time. You have to set up a system to do that. And by the way, prospecting is not a shotgun approach. You don't blast something out there and expect something to work. You can't send out a thousand postcards tomorrow and expect listings to roll in. It doesn't happen. Incidentally, when we send out postcards and mailers, just generic stuff, our return on blind mailers is about one-tenth of one percent. What that means is if you send out a thousand postcards, one person might contact you. And that one person may or may not buy any property from you. That's not the way to actually build a business over time. You have to do it systematically. There are two truths of prospecting, two fundamental truths of prospecting. The first one is that prospecting has to be consistent to be successful. You can't deal with expireds tomorrow, for sale by owners next week, and then three months from now send out a thousand postcards and expect to make a great living. You have to set up a system and follow it consistently. And if you decide to target expired listings, that's great. But do it day after day after day. You're not talking the same expireds, but you're delivering your message and you're getting better and better and better at it. You're tweaking it and trying to make it work. If you deal with for sale by owners, you're doing the same thing. But stick with the same system over and over again and then build onto it. And the second truth is that prospecting is a process, not an event. It isn't mailing out a thousand postcards. It's setting up a system and, process, and creating a process to bring yourself some business. Prospecting, again, is the number one reason that realtors fail. Well, Lauren, I, I couldn't prospect today. I, I'm sorry, Lauren, but see, I had out-of-town clients coming in today, and I know I blocked off time on my day timer to do it, but I had out-of-town buyers that came in today, and I didn't want to lose those. They were out to look at two houses this morning. Well, they were really rentals, but I, I had to do that. And then this afternoon, I really had to grocery shop. There was some stuff on sale at the Shop and Save. And, you know, my favorite TV show was on this afternoon. I didn't, really didn't want to miss it. I don't have a TiVo, and I've got this awful hangnail, and I just couldn't dial the phone. Everybody's got an excuse not to prospect. You've got to set time in your calendar, time in your schedule, and you have to just do it. That's the, the uh, Nike line. Just do it. I'm going to start by talking about target marketing and positioning yourself. The first thing you have to do, it's a four-step process to select any target market and actually prospect. Number one is selecting the market you want. You can go after expireds or for sale by owners. You can go after your sphere of influence, and we'll talk about a few other methods. But select who you're going to target first. The second thing you're going to do is select your method of contact. How am I going to communicate with them? Am I going to Twitter to them? Am I going to text message everybody? Am I going to just post stuff on social networks? Well, Lauren, we can't call people anymore, you know, because of that do not call list. Do you know that more than 50% of America did not sign up for the do not call list? You can still make phone calls. You can still mail them stuff. Mailing isn't very effective, but you can do it. You can email, you can send newsletters. There are a lot of ways to contact, but select the method that you're going to contact them through or the methods, if there are several of them that you're going to mix and match. And then the third thing is to give your prospect something of value. And I think a lot of realtors fall short here. I had a realtor who came up to me the other day, and he said, Lauren, I sent out postcards, and they didn't work. Well, it's not a big surprise, but what did you do for on your postcard? He said, I took my business card. It's beautiful, great business card. And I blew it up so that it's an oversized postcard, and I sent out 1,000 of them, but nobody called. Really? You sent out your, post, your uh, business card as a postcard, and nobody called. There's no reason for them to call. May have gotten lucky. Someone may have said, oh, look, Century 21 such and such. I was just thinking about selling my house. He must be a neighborhood realtor. Yeah, once in a blue moon, that actually works. 
the reality is you have to have a reason for them to call you. If you send out a just sold postcard, and we'll talk about something as an alternative to just sold postcards in a little bit, but if you send out a just sold postcard, you may hit a neighbor who says, wow, if they sold that house, maybe they can sell mine. That's possible. But you have to give them something of value, some reason to contact you other than I want to buy a house today.